G'day guys, Mgentem here. Today in this Octane Render tutorial we'll be going through the render kernels. Now in my last um, render kernel uh, tutorial it was mostly going over the theory of it. Uh, what to use, uh, direct lighting, path tracing, or PMC, what um, is under the hood, what is a kernel, um, you know the mathematical terms for it. Um, but today we're going to learn about the actual um, options and functions and the sliders, uh, which one is to give you the best effect, which one doesn't. So, f so uh, yeah. Now, render kernels. The render kernel button is located here, current render kernel. It's these gadgets that move. So, uh, like I said in the last tutorial, an octane render kernel, sorry, the render kernel is pretty much what powers and what renders your scene. There are three different types of render kernels, direct lighting, path tracing, and PMC. Uh, in my last tutorial, I told you which ones, which scenarios is best to use them, what are the limitations, what are the disadvantages of using each uh, said render kernel. But these are the options. So right now we are in direct lighting. Um, the options here is specular depth, glossy depth, ados, ray epsilon, sample limit, filter size and alpha channel, keep environment, alpha shadows, global illumination mode, diffuse, depth and R Rob. Now uh, these names may be different. I just uh, I change the names whenever I there's a new release just so that I just for my own personal benefits but um, the same options is the same. So remember we're in direct lighting for the people that are getting confused. So first one is specular depth. Specular depth is pretty much the amount of bounces uh, or part, uh, the amount of bounces that specular materials have. So on one, all black, as you can see, that's a specular material. Therefore, there's no bounces in specular depth. Well, there's only one. So if we put that to two, there's some coming up and it's around. Uh, three it actually goes inwards so the laws of uh, refraction take place and if you keep them going up it will just get more stronger and stronger and on one, uh, 1024 as you can see um, full uh, effect very nice so let's just bring, bring that down to about 30. Glossy depth is the same thing. Um, if we put it to one, uh, not many bounces are happening on the uh, glossy material. However, if we put this up to a thousand, we get full glossy. We get over 1,024 bounces, and as you can see, it's extremely very strong. And let's bring that down to 50 because it slows it up. Uh, Aedist is pretty much the shadow depth. Uh, the ray listen contributes to the uh, what, I, what I found out it's contributes to the reflection and reflection of your materials. So right now at zero, um, as you can see, it messes up the all the uh, lights. Um, bounces often into the specular material, gets darkened, and all these artifacts show up on the glossy uh, material. And I don't think there are any bounces off of the diffuse... Oh, wait, no, there's some. But yeah, as you can see, all these uh, artifacts come up. So if I put this to 0 0.1, it's way more lighter. And if I put this back to zero, it gets darker. So I oh know put it around here, leave that at default if you want to try and experiment with it. Sample uh, limits is pretty much the amount of samples. So yeah, that's pretty basic. Alpha channel is uh, erasing your background. So if there's no geometry that's in the way, it will be erased and you can save this as a PNG put this in the PNG um, image into Photoshop or After Effects or Sony Vegas, composition your scene and introduce other elements 
it pretty much works like green screen and blue screen. Um, next is Alpha Shadows. Alpha Shadows is enabling all of your alpha textures um, for the bounces to go through the textures so it can only bring up the colored diffuse texture. If you don't click this on, you will only see a shadow of a four point plane and that you, don't, you wouldn't want that for nature scenes and such. Now, Global Elimination Node or GI Mode. This one is probably my favorite option in direct lighting. Uh, with this one, it pretty much works uh, with just like putting this down to one and this down to one. However, you have more options. Uh, so if I, put, if I were to put this, so it's currently on three, but before we do that, let's just check out the diffuse depth. So the diffuse depth works with the diffuse materials, I guess, just like with the glossy specular depth and the glossy depth. And your R Rob um, influences your specular material. So now, um, so uh, with these GI mode, we were currently on. So we are currently on two, which is the sample and environments. Put these down here. So now, if we were to go to none, it's purely working on these settings. Um, if we were to go to ambience, it would be zero. If we were to go to sampled, it would be uh, the. Um, Default ambient inclusion is a much more more realistic approach, and diffuse is subpar the path tracing influence. So if you're in a rush but you need a much more photorealistic scene, you would use diffuse. And if you're just going around your scene, adding all the materials, I would probably pick ambient. So that is the direct lighting render kernel. Next thing is path tracing. Path tracing is, as you can see, much more slower. However, it is using brute force calculations and algorithms to achieve real life like situations. So, now, if the max depth is pretty much the depth of all materials, and if you were to put it down to zero, you would get an ambience, no bounces to no minimal bounces to no bounces if we were to put this down to 2000 as you can see all materials are getting bounced to the fullest so if you want a much more realistic result you would put it to 204 our rob is uh, as I said again influences specular so as you can see the sides are going a lot more brighter let's just let that cook out for a few seconds and if I put this down to zero, not as bright, and it's much more faster. So, obviously, if you want a much more realistic approach, you would put that to about 0 0.5 to in between one. Uh, I never put this to one, I've always left it at default, and I always get the most gorgeous looking renders. Anyway, um, next is. Ray, yep, listen, that's already explained. Don't put it to zero, you'll get artifacts. Put it to one, it's a bit more slower. And yep, sample limit is the amount of samples you want to stop at. Filter size, um, now filter size is makes the whole entire image uh, blur. I think it is to get rid of any um, any unnecessary noise or like a little fine, fine finishing touch up. Uh, I've never used it, however I'm pretty sure production wise when you want like quick renders and there's those little dots here and there, filtering would uh, help you with that. So, um, next is, that's path tracing. Now PMC, PMC is my favorite render kernel. PMC is pretty much path tracing on steroids. It calculates caustics a whole lot more better and just converges and just cover it covers scenes that are a lot more faster and better than 
I've seen in path tracing, but the scene would have to be filled up with mesh based lighting in a lot, lo a lot of them. So, uh, PMC has a few more extra options. Um, as you can see, map depth, uh, map depth. Yeah, we went over Rob. Yeah, Ray. So, um, exploration, exploration strength is pretty much the caustic, um, the caustic uh, pickup. So, if I will put it to zero, it would work almost like what path tracing would. Where if I will put this to one, it would get extremely blotchy. But if I would let that render out, it will become very blotchy. But over time, those blotchy lights will come up to very, if I would have to say, gorgeous looking caustics. And now if we'll put this down to default, it would um, not be as blotchy. But you can still see the pickup. If it, will, it takes about five seconds to get started and then it'll just go off. Um, so direct light importance is what I found out about direct light importance is the uh, most brightest light source uh, that's available that is like on the uh, in the render that will that will get uh, covered a lot more faster so if I were to do a comparison so if I keep that image in mind put it down to zero so all these highlights remain the same where direct light importance is here all the bright lights will be magnified Max rejects. With max rejects, uh, I would suggest to um, leave this as default as this produces um, a biased nature, which I've read up on. I don't know if the biased nature is put on to at a hundred or if it would be at a th or ten thousand. Um, I don't really see much of a difference in terms of the uh, mega the ms per seconds yeah so leave it in around here I think putting it to 100 you'll have bias shortcuts where 10,000 is like on steroids so I would leave it around 500 um, so um, that is the render kernel tutorial I'm sorry if my uh, sorry, I'm sorry if it's not more in depth or if I'm technically wrong, it's more of a what you see is what you get. Um, but you know, there's not many full 15 minute HD 20 plus tutorials of Octane Render out there. So uh, yeah, uh, please rate, comment, subscribe. Um, and um, yeah, spread the word of these tutorials.